In the previous video, we calculated the rate of heat transfer through a composite wall, but we only considered conduction through each of the layers of the composite wall. So in this video, we're also going to consider the surface heat transfer coefficients. Now just to explain what we mean by this. If we consider our composite slab in the top left hand corner, then the air inside the room is going to be in contact with the wall. And what we end up with is an equivalent thin layer of air in which energy needs to transfer through. So the best way to think of it is a very thin layer of stationary air. Now the same is also true outside of the building. So again referring to our diagram, outside of the building we're going to have a thin layer of air that the heat's going to need to transfer through. So when we consider this thin layer of air, what we need to incorporate is something called the surface heat transfer coefficients. So for the purpose of this example, I've specified that we have a surface heat transfer coefficient inside the room of 32 watts per meter squared per Kelvin. And I've specified that outside the room, we have a surface heat transfer coefficient of 12 watts per meter squared per Kelvin. Now there's lots of different things that can affect this value. And in actual fact, it's something that we can determine based on lots of other parameters, but that's beyond the scope of this video. But typically, the types of things that might affect this value might be things such as wind outside the building, and inside the building we may have convection currents as a result of any heating. So those are the sorts of things that would affect our surface heat transfer coefficient. And in fact, we actually have things called natural and forced convection. Forced convection is when we produce a convection effect using a fan or something similar. But for now, we'll just work with the values that we have there. Now, over on the right hand side, I've added an additional equation since the last video. And here we have a method of calculating the thermal resistance due to convection. And the way that we calculate that is by doing 1 over the surface heat transfer coefficient times the area. Now, hopefully, you recall from the previous video that the way that we calculated our total thermal resistance was by adding up the thermal resistance for each of our layers 1, 2 and 3. Now we can continue this method because if we work out the resistance coefficient for our thin layer of air on the inside of the building and we work out our resistance coefficient for the thin layer of air outside the building then what we can do is just add that to the totals that we had previously. So I'm not going to go through the process of calculating R1, R2 and R3 again for the conduction through the three layers of our composite slab these values have been taken from the previous video. So the thermal resistance of the plasterboard was 4.8 times 10 to the minus 3. The thermal resistance of the breeze block was 0.015. And the thermal resistance of the brick was 4.571 times 10 to the minus 3. So in order to calculate our total thermal resistance, we first need the thermal resistance of the thin layer of air inside the building or on the hot side of the wall. It's calculated by doing 1, divided by the surface heat transfer coefficient of 32, times the area of 25, giving us a value equal to 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3. Once again, that's Kelvin per watt. Now we can repeat that for the cold side. On the cold side, we have 1 over the surface heat transfer coefficient for the cold side of 12 times the area of 25, giving us a value equal to 3.3 recurring times 10 to the minus 3. So the next step then is to calculate our total thermal resistance. And the way that we're going to do that is by adding our five thermal resistances together. So we have R1, R2 and R3. We have RH and we have RC. So adding all of those values together, we have 4.8 times 10 to the minus 3 plus 0.015 plus 4.571 times 10 to the minus 3 plus 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3 plus 3.333 times 10 to the minus 3, giving us a value of R total equal to 0 0.028954 Kelvin per watt. 
So finally, we can calculate our rate of heat transfer, taking into consideration our surface heat transfer coefficients. We get T hot, 22, minus T cold, 4, divided by our total thermal resistance, 0 0.028954. Giving us a rate of heat transfer equal to 621.7 watts. Now, when we disregarded the surface heat transfer coefficients, we had a heat transfer of 738.6. So, by taking into consideration that thin layer of air at the inside and outside surface, we can see that a more accurate representation of the rate of heat transfer is actually slightly lower meaning that less heat is actually being lost from the room to the outside air. Now once again it is worth mentioning the calculations that we've done there are for an area of 25 metres. If we wanted to know the rate of heat transfer per metre, then all we would need to do is divide our value of 627.1 by the area of 25, and that would give us the rate of heat transfer per metre of wall. The advantage of calculating that would be that it would give us a point of reference for different wall constructions and the rate of heat transfer for different composite walls.